Morning brothers and sisters. I want to make a little video about this uh, scripture here, this uh, receiving power. It's Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up and the cloud received him out of their sight. Some of the last words spoken by the Lord Jesus Christ to his disciples was that they would receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Just prior to that, Jesus says, You have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So the Lord Jesus is clearly talking about being baptized in the Holy Spirit and that they would receive power. Receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. That's the key part for me that you'll be my witnesses. Power to be a witness. What does it mean to be endued with power? I want to read uh, what the Lord gave me the other day. Power, brothers and sisters. Power primarily to be a witness. So much has been written about the Holy Spirit. So much has been spoken about the sign gifts. So much has been counterfeited by sheer emotion and even the enemy himself. What are the signs of a man or a woman as baptized in the Holy Spirit? Is it tongues? Is it being an apostle, a prophet, a worker of miracles? Scripture says, and all are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. First Corinthians two nine two uh, first Corinthians twelve twenty nine through thirty one. These are rhetorical questions. Uh, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers? The obvious answer is no. All of these gifts are from the Holy Spirit indeed, yet the primary identification of one baptized in the Holy Spirit is your witness. It's the life that you lead. A life that clearly identifies with Jesus. It's the words that you speak. The word of God does not return void. It is your unashamedness. Are you ashamed of God before men? Are we too afraid to share the gospel with others? This is a sure sign that we are either not baptized in the Holy Spirit or that we thought somehow that it was a one-time thing and that there was no requirements to be full of the Holy Spirit. We must abide in Christ and in his word. We must walk closely with the Lord, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that we may be partakers of his righteousness and his holiness. We're also called to be disciples. Now on the road to Emmaus, Jesus walked with two, of, two such disciples, and when that walk was over, they later marveled, did not our hearts burn within us? while he talked with us on the way and while he opened up to us the scriptures. The fellowship of the burning heart, brothers and sisters, those who are baptized in the Holy Spirit will have such fellowship. Their hearts will burn within them as the Holy Spirit opens up to them the scriptures, just as Jesus did with these two men. The Greek word for heart is cardia, that's cardia with a K. It means the effective center of our being. If Jesus is the effective center of our being, then there shall be a fire at the very heart of who we are. Does the fire burn, brothers and sisters? Without the wind of the, the Spirit, there is but a smoldering ember. With the Spirit, there is a raging fire that burns. It is this passion for all things Christ that creates in us the light of the gospel of the kingdom. And this light shines into the darkness. See, brothers and sisters, there are primary identification that we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's not the sign gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
the primary purpose, according to Jesus' last words to his disciples, that they would be endured with power and high so that there could be a witness, a witness to the Lord Jesus Christ, that they could testify of the reality of the Lord Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's the primary purpose, this boldness. We see this with Peter. In, in the very following chapter, in Acts chapter 2, where this, this, this man who had been ashamed and afraid, so to speak, that he denies even knowing Jesus before a little servant girl, now we see this dramatic transformation. Dramatic transformation. Where he's speaking to a hostile crowd, potentially tens of thousands. We know that 3,000 were saved that day. We know that there was the feast. And so there was pilgrims from all over the, the, the known world at that time. Jerusalem was chock full of pilgrims and zealots. And Peter, with the boldness that can only come from the Holy Spirit, stands up in front of this whole crowd and he says this. He says, you crucified the Christ. Brother, that's, sisters, that's power. That's power. Now, the added benefit of being baptised in the Holy Spirit are all the gifts just mentioned to A, edify and equip the saints, edify yourself, certainly. That's a primary part of it. But the primary purpose of being baptised in the Holy Spirit is that we would be witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. We know... Most of you will know witness, martyr, same word. Different applications can have, we can be both a witness for Christ, we could also be a martyr for Christ. Think about the kind of power that would need to stand tall when men are coming after you to kill you for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you not need power? Would you not need to be filled with the Holy Spirit to stand in the evil day? Certainly you would. You would certainly need that. I want to read... Uh, Something that A.B. Simpson, uh, a man from another century, marvellous uh, pastor from uh, the, last, uh, the last century, the beginnings of the last century, he writes, Our life shall thus be transformed from a defence of warfare in which we are always attacking evil to a glorious conscious, consciousness of God only which shall exclude the evil from our thoughts as well as from our life. We shall not have to constantly clear the sunken rocks from the channel, but on the high and full torrent of the divine life we shall rise above every obstruction and move, as in Ezekiel's vision, in a river of life, which shall be above our ankles and above our loins, a river to swim in, carrying us by its substantial fullness. <laughs> Our life shall be transformed. You see, what Simpson's talking about is that when our eyes are upon Jesus, when we are not simply living a life that we, we're always cursing the darkness, we're always worried about the evil, we're always worried about the sin that surrounds us and we're focused on that, Whatever we focus on, we magnify. Isn't that right? When we're baptized by the power, and, and when we're baptized into the Holy Spirit, and we're filled with the power of God, what is the primary purpose of the Holy Spirit? It's to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that right? He, his primary purpose is to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts. And so when the Lord Jesus Christ is lifted up in our hearts, when he's magnified in our thoughts, in the very centre of our being, the very centre of who we are, we're no longer focused on the darkness, we're focused on the light. We're focused on the consciousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this itself empowers us. It empowers us, it emboldens us, it emboldens us. The primary purpose of the Holy Spirit, of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, is to endue us with power to become witnesses of what? Witness, witnesses of the gospel, the kingdom. Witnesses that the Lord Jesus Christ indeed was resurrected and that he lives. He who was dead now lives. He lives. And how do we know that? Because he lives inside of us. 
we're a representation of, of the life of Christ in us. And that can only come by the power of the living God. And so, brothers and sisters, I just encourage you today. I don't know what your theology is and what your focus is. You know, tongues and and interpretations of tongues and words of wisdom and, and words of knowledge and all these different gifts which I believe in and uh, which I have myself exercised a few of those gifts. Uh, I speak in tongues. I've been given words of wisdom. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the one who's speaking. God himself It's the message that's important, not the messenger. And not the means of the message. It's the messenger herself. It's God speaking to his people. It's God testifying of the Lord Jesus Christ in the hearts of his people to a lost and dying world. That's the primary purpose of being baptized in the Holy Spirit, that we would become witnesses, witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we have to give up our life, we'd have that strength and the power to stand in the evil day. That. It's a simple reading of the scripture, First uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, from the Lord Jesus Christ's mouth himself. This is why we are baptized. We are called to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. God bless you, brothers and sisters.